Dear students, before we learn about the perineum in detail, let us have a brief overall view of the region of the perineum. In this discussion, we will define perineum, its boundaries and subdivisions. The cavities of thorax are the pleural and pericardial cavities. The cavities of abdomen are the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. The pelvic cavity contains the open outside into the perineum. The pelvic cavity and the perineum or separated by pelvic diaphragm. The pelvic diaphragm is formed by the two muscles, the levator ani and the coccygeus muscles. And in this picture, you can see the boundary between the pelvis and perineum, which is formed by the pelvic diaphragm. And you are aware that the pelvis is divided into greater pelvis and lesser pelvis, otherwise known as the false pelvis and true pelvis. Then the boundary between the greater and lesser pelvis is known as the pelvic brick. And this pelvic brim is formed by the sacral promontory behind and then on either side by the arcuate line of ilium and the anteriorly by the pectin pubis and pubic crest. Among this, the arcuate line, the pectin pubis and the pubic crest are together called as the linea terminalis. This you have learned in your earlier classes. Coming to the definition of perineum, it is a diamond shaped space below the pelvic diaphragm and contains all the structures that occupy the pelvic outlet. In this picture, you can understand the boundaries of the perineum and it is a diamond shaped space and it is situated below the pelvic diaphragm and what are its boundaries? Anteriorly you are seeing the pubic symphysis, posteriorly is the coccyx, laterally or the ischial tuberosities. Anterolaterally is the ischiopubic rami. Posterolaterally will be the sacrotuberous ligaments. So this is the diamond shaped area at the pelvic outlet, at the pelvic outlet, which is known as the perineum. let us learn about the boundaries of the perineum. Anteriorly, it is the pubic symphysis. Posteriorly is the coccyx. Laterally are the ischial tuberosities. Anterolaterally the ischiopubic rami. Posterolaterally the sacrotuberous ligaments. And in this picture, you can see it divided into two triangles, an anterior urogenital triangle and a posterior anal triangle. By means of an imaginary line drawn across the ischial tuberosities. So, 
This is the imaginary line drawn along the ischial tuberosities. In front of it is the urogenital triangle which is bounded by the pubic symphysis, the ischiopubic rami with ischial tuberosity and the imaginary line and it contains the urethra in the case of males, urethro and vicina in the case of females and posteriorly is the anal triangle which is bounded by the imaginary line connecting the ischial tuberosities and then the sacro tuberous ligaments and the coccyx it contains the opening of the anal canal so at the junction of these two triangles in the midline is a fibromuscular structure the perineal body in anatomical position that is the person is standing erect the perineum is a narrow area between two thighs if the patient is in lithotomy position as is shown in this picture with the thighs abducted it is diamond shaped area extending from the pubic symphysis anteriorly to the tip of coccyx posteriorly so this is a diamond shaped area and in the above picture you can see the two triangles the anterior urogenital triangle with its boundaries you are seeing and the posterior anal triangle with its boundaries and there is what is known as the anocoxygeal ligament which extends from the posterior margin of the anal opening to the tip of the coccyx and anterior to the anal opening you are seeing the fibromuscular perineal body in the midline at the junction of urogenital and anal triangles. In this picture you can see the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity with the boundary between the two and then the sigmoid colon its continuation rectum and anal canal in the pelvis and you can also identify the pelvic diaphragm and in this picture you can see the pelvic diaphragm separating the pelvic cavity from the perineum which is the pelvic outlet and the skin in relation with the perineum perianal skin so the roof of the perineum is the pelvic diaphragm and the floor is formed by the skin and underlying structures so if it is in the standing position you will see the pelvic diaphragm above and then below it will be the perineum so try to have a orientation of the pelvic diaphragm and the perineum in the standing position and in the lithotomy position so now you are familiar with the boundary between the pelvic cavity and the perineum and you also know about the subdivisions of perineum into urogenital triangle anteriorly and anal triangle posteriorly and this picture will give you the boundaries between the 
urogenital triangle and anal triangle. So, which is the imaginary line drawn across the ischial tuberosities and a triangular urogenital triangle anteriorly and the anal triangle posteriorly. The urogenital triangle of the perineum shows further subdivisions. And what are those things? So, starting from the pelvic diaphragm down towards the perineum, you will find another diaphragm known as the urogenital diaphragm. And within that, you will form a space known as the deep perineal pouch and still next to it down will be the superficial perineal pouch that is towards the perineum and the perineal body. So these are the components you will be learning in the urogenital triangle. So what are they? It is urogenital, diaphragm, the deep perineal pouch, the superficial perineal pouch and perineal body. In the anal triangle, the anal canal divides it into two ischiorectal fossae on either side. Two ischiorectal fossae and there is a pudendal canal. So these you will be learning in the anal triangle. So the urogenital triangle is divided into two pouches. That is the superficial perineal pouch and the deep pouch. The anal triangle is divided into two ischiorectal fossae. The urogenital triangle is divided into two pouches by three facial layers. Now let us see what are those facial layers. Look at this picture starting from the perianal skin. Then there is the superficial fascia next to the skin. The superficial fascia in the perineal region is divided into a superficial fatty and the membranous layers. These two layers are continuous with the corresponding layers in the anterior abdominal wall. The membranous layer is known as the collis fascia, so which you are seeing. So this is the one facial layer and the other facial layer is the perineal membrane or inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. So it is a very strong deep fascia and there are two pouches on either side of it. So that means it is forming boundaries for two pouches in the perineal region. They are the deep perineal pouch. The superior surface of the perineal membrane will form the boundary for the deep perineal pouch. And the inferior surface of the perineal membrane forms a boundary for the superficial perineal pouch. And the third facial layer is the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. So this is the superior fascia. So now you can understand the arrangement of the layers. That is the collis fascia the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm 
and the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. And above that, you are seeing the pelvic diaphragm formed by the vetter and a muscles. And these take origin from the fascia covering the obturator internus muscle. And between the pelvic diaphragm, it is the levator ani and the obturator internus. You are seeing the ischiorectal fossa. Now let us learn about the pelvic diaphragm, a little bit of it. And the pelvic diaphragm consists of two muscles. That is the levator ani and the coccygeus. These two muscles are contributing for the pelvic diaphragm. There are two components in the levator ani muscle. One is the pubococcygeus, the other is the iliococcygeus. The coccygeus part is also known as the ischiococcygeus. So the three components of pelvic diaphragm are the pubococcygeus iliococcygeus and ischiococcygeus. These three components, they take origin from the pubic symphysis and from the arcus tendinus, the thickened obturator fascia and from the ischial spine. And they run posteriorly and get inserted into the sacrum and then the coccyx. So you can see the three components, the pubococcygeus part, the iliococcygeus part and the ischiococcygeus part in relation with the pubic symphysis and coccyx you are seeing. And you know that there are three openings in relation with the perineum from anterior to posterior in the case of Male and female, you will find anteriorly the urethral orifice, and in the case of female, behind the urethral orifice will be the vaginal orifice, and posteriorly the anal orifice. The fibers of the pubococcygeus they form slings around these openings. The one along the urethral opening is called the puboerythralis and the thing around the vaginal orifice in females is the puboevaginalis and around the rectum is called the puborectalis. That's about the pelvic diaphragm. You will learn in detail in the discussion on pelvic diaphragm. In this picture you can see the arrangement of the fascia and various pouches in relation with the urogenital triangle. You can identify the superior and inferior pubic rami and between them the obturator foramen that gives origin around which will be the obturator externus and obturator internus muscles and you can identify the pelvic diaphragm. This is the pelvic diaphragm and then passing through a gaps in the pelvic diaphragm. There are two gaps. That is the urogenital hiatus and then the anal hiatus. Through the urogenital hiatus, the urethra in the case of males, urethra and vagina in the case of females passes through it to the perineum and from the posterior opening, the rectum will become continuous with the anal canal and that anal opening will be entering into the perineum and you can see the urinary bladder with the interior of it showing the openings of the ureters and the urethral opening and the prostate gland. We are seeing and you can see the urethra passing into the perineum. Now, there is a, the superior fascia of the urogenital 
diaphragm. This is the green one. Then you are seeing below the perineal membrane. That is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And in this picture you can understand that the urogenital diaphragm, if you observe, it is closed on all sides. And in relation with that, you will find the deep perineal pouch. And you are seeing the perineal membrane. And next, you can see in this area around the urethra will be the bulb of the penis. Bulb of the penis. And which is covered by a muscle, the bulb of spongiosis. Then at the sides, you will be seeing the two crora of the penis surrounded by the corpus spongiosum muscle. So this bulb of spongiosis and bulb, the crora and the corpus spongiosum, they are contents of the superficial perineal pouch. And you can see the colis fascia here and the skin of the perineum. So, from the pelvic cavity towards the perineal skin, you will be seeing the pelvic diaphragm and then below it the urogenital diaphragm formed by superior fascia and inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and containing the deep perineal pouch. Then you are seeing the superficial perineal pouch containing the bulb of penis and its surrounding muscle, the crora of the penis and the covering muscles, the superficial perineal pouch. Then below it will be the colis fascia, the membranous layer of superficial fascia of perineum, then the skin of perineum. So this is the orientation of the structures in the anatomical position. And if it is in the lithotomy position, what you will be seeing first is the skin of perineum followed by the membranous layer, then the superficial perineal pouch, the perineal membrane, the deep perineal pouch, the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and pelvic diaphragm. So this is another picture to make you understand and you can see the ischiopubic ramai, the obturator internus muscle, the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm pierced by the urethra, then the deep perineal pouch, the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm, then the superficial perineal pouch the membranous layer of the superficial fascia, that is the fascia of colis. So, if you understand this part, you can say that there is a superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. Between them is the deep perineal space and it is closed on all sides. And through it passes the urethra, which is known as membranous urethra. Then there is the superficial perineal space or perineal pouch, which is between the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm or perineal membrane and the membranous layer of superficial fascia of perineum, known as colis fascia. And if you observe, this space is closed posteriorly and anteriorly it is open. This space, space is open anteriorly, the superficial perineal pouch. The colis fascia is continuous with the scarpus fascia in the anterior abdominal wall and it is also continuous with the fascia of penis and the daughters of the scrotum. So now you have understood in the lithotomy position what you will be seeing.
can be the skin of perineum followed by membranous layer of superficial fascia, then the superficial perineal pouch containing the bulb and chlora in the case of males and the corresponding structures in the female. Bulb of the vestibule we call it instead of bulb of spongiosis. Then there is the deep perineal pouch which contains the membranous urethra and then the musculature in relation with it. Spinter urethra muscle you will find. And in relation with each of these pouches, superficial perineal pouch and deep perineal pouch, there are transverse muscles known as the superficial transverse perineal and deep transverse perineal. In the superficial and deep perineal pouches respectively. This is the sagittal section where you can see the deep perineal pouch between the superior fascia and inferior fascia of your genital diaphragm and the superficial perineal pouch and the colis fascia. So if you observe this colis fascia is becoming continuous with the fascia in relation with the dorsus tunic. This is the dorsus fascia in the scrotum and it becomes continuous with the penile fascia in relation with the penis and with the scarpus fascia in the anterior abdominal wall. And between the superior and inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm we are seeing the deep perineal pouch and the urogenital diaphragm. We are seeing the closed appearance. So it is closed on all sides. Anteriorly it shows a thickening known as the transverse perineal ligament. And you can see the urethra passing through the urogenital diaphragm and in the superficial perineal pouch in relation with the bulbospongiosis. So this part is called the membranous urethra in relation with the deep perineal pouch and the spongy urethra in relation with the bulbospongiosis. And its continuation in the penis you can see the penile urethra. And above you are seeing the pelvic diaphragm. So this will give you a view that the deep perineal pouch is a closed space. The superficial perineal pouch is closed posteriorly and anteriorly it is continuous and extends into the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall passing through the scrotum and along the penis. Now coming to the anal triangle. Look at the picture. You can understand the pelvic diaphragm which is formed by the vetter anae and below it you are seeing the sphincter anae externus muscles which you are seeing in the pelvic wall and you can see the rectum and its continuation anal canal passing into the perineum. And another feature which you are observing here is a, the obturator internus muscle and in relation with that the medial wall of the obturator internus we are seeing the pudendal canal so which is formed by splitting of the fascia covering the obturator internus. The pudendal canal is also known as Alcox canal and the contents of the pudendal canal are the pudendal nerve, internal pudendal, artery and vein. So which you have seen when you are doing the dissection of the gluteal region. So the pudendal nerve and the 
internal pudendal vessels so another area which you are seeing here and which you have to focus is between the ureter ana and the sphincter ana externus medially and the obturator internus laterally is a wedge shaped space which is known as the ischio rectal fossa so because of the anal canal the perineal body and what is known as ano coccygeal raphe which extends from the posterior margin of the anal canal to the tip of coccyx the anal triangle is divided into the two ischio rectal fossae ischio rectal or ischio anal fossae which is bounded by the ureter ana and sphincter ana externus medially the obturator internus and the fascia covering the obturator internus laterally and within this lateral wall is the pudendal canal containing the pudendal nerve and internal pudendal vessels that will be supplying the perineal area so you have learnt about the urogenital triangle and its subdivisions the anal triangle and its subdivisions in this discussion about the introduction to perineum we have learnt about the pelvic diaphragm the urogenital diaphragm the superficial perineal pouch the deep perineal pouch the perineal membrane the perineal body the ischio rectal fossa and pudendal canal you will be studying in detail in the topics that will be dealt separately for each of these components